In the early mornings, the red-bellied macaws leave their roosts in the Maurice palms and royal palms fringing the swamp to forage in the forests surrounding the Nariva wetland and the nearby Aripo savanna. The hollow palm stems serve for breeding as well as roosting. Potential nesting sites are scarce properties and often fought over. At Nariva, efforts are underway to reintroduce the blue and yellow macaw, a species which previously inhabited the swamp, but was wiped out through poaching and habitat destruction. For the first time in over 40 years, the blue and gold macaw has once again a home in the Nariva Reserve. Where the river eventually reaches the sea, especially along the east and west coast of Trinidad, rich mangrove swamps develop. Sediment brought down by the rivers is deposited at the river mouth, supporting stands of mangrove and on the western coast, extensive coastal mudflats. The mud is a resource shared by many resident and migrant birds each species exacting its share by means of differing feeding techniques. Herons patiently stalk fish or crabs they capture with a sudden lunge. This contrasts with the sandpipers as they gather food from the surface. Scarlet ibis are among the deeper feeders, often plunging their beaks in so that their faces are pressed into the mud as they hunt for fiddler crabs. The black skimmer sports one of the more remarkable bills. The lower mandible projects well beyond the upper half in a most peculiar manner, the value of which is evident when feeding. The bird fires low over the water, slicing the surface with its knife-like lower mandible. When it detects a fish or shrimp, its bill snaps shut. As small fish are attracted to the disturbance, the skimmer will often trace the same path again and capture the curious. This tactile feeding method is well suited to the calm murky water with poor visibility. The Karani Swamp on the west coast 
supports large numbers of scarlet ibis. They have recently started breeding in small numbers after a long period when they bred only on the mainland. They are one of the island's principal tourist attractions and have been recognized as Trinidad's national bird. Unlike the calm waters and mudflats of Trinidad's west coast, Tobago on its east coast has clear water and crashing waves. A different complement of seabirds lives here, typified by the tropic birds of Little Tobago. Tropic birds range throughout the world's tropical oceans, feeding on squid and fish. Tiny islands, near rich feeding grounds and relatively safe from predators, provide good nesting sites. Relative is the operative word. Tropic birds nest on the ground, but choose steep cliffs, difficult for terrestrial predators to access but they can't prevent an attack from the air. Magnificent frigate birds, living up to their other name of man-of-war birds, while not predators, are pirates. After a long day of fishing, tired tropic birds return to feed their young. The man-of-war birds, after lazily floating on updrafts for much of the day, lie in wait. Their technique is to harry the incoming tropic birds and force them to regurgitate their prey. The thief then picks off a free meal. It appears that not all frigate birds have this villainous habit. Some individuals depend on their own fishing ability, but others appear to specialize in a piratic lifestyle targeting tropic birds, boobies, or other species. Along sandy beaches, especially those of the north and east coasts of Trinidad, the leatherbacks largest of all turtles, lumber their way ashore to lay their eggs. This occurs between the months of March and August, usually at night. But at peak season, turtles may be seen completing their task well past dawn. After excavating a neat hole above the high water mark and carefully depositing her 80 or so eggs, the female leatherback delicately refills the hole and packs down the sand. She then camouflages the nest with scoops of sand and with much effort hauls herself back down the beach and returns to the sea.
Nesting is a time of great danger for the turtle. For while a powerful swimmer in the ocean, she is vulnerable to poaching on land. At least at the beaches of Matura and Grand Rivier, she can feel a measure of security as the local communities provide protection for the turtles. Thanks to their efforts, the nesting sites now rank as the second largest in the world. The leatherback eggs hatch after about 60 days. For the baby turtles, the journey from the nest to the water's edge is a perilous one, with further dangers at sea. But those who survive may one day return to the same beach at which they were born to lay their own eggs. The leatherback turtles at Matura and Grand River and the blue and yellow macaws of the Nariva Reserve have a lesson to teach us. It is that while we enjoy their presence and they enrich our lives, they can do so for only as long as we look after them. We must be their custodians and the custodians as well of all the other creatures that inhabit our wild places. We in Trinidad and Tobago are a young nation. The experience of older nations is that as a country develops and the needs of society are met, the urge for natural surroundings grows stronger. But often, only after much has been lost. So with our enjoyment comes responsibility. A responsibility to ourselves and to the world to play our part in supporting the welfare of all the world's creatures and to ensure that our golden tree frog, oscillated gecko, luminous lizard and pawi remain a part of the world's biodiversity and a continuing source of wonder and enjoyment for our people at home.